Hello, Slots enthusiasts. How are you? It's great to hang out with you again for another Professor Slots podcast episode and live stream. Today, we'll be, we're going to be diving into players' club cards. Are they worth using? What do you get from them? And what might you be losing? So that's coming up. But first, if you're with us uh, during the live stream, make sure to say hello to everyone in the live chat. Um, many people have been doing that. Like I said, I got here a little early and it's always wonderful to, to visit a little bit um, less on the show, a little bit more before the show. Uh, let us know where you are at or where you uh, play slots. Um, some people are in Texas, like Jan, um, and plays in Louisiana or um, others, um, uh, you know, Oklahoma. So let us know where you're at and where you play slots. I'll check in with the live chat in a few minutes, um, as, as always. Um, <clears throat> and make sure I don't have something going off on me and some of the software. Okay, so... Um, so if you're with us during uh, the live stream, uh, please say hello, uh, and um, I'll check in with the live chat in a few minutes. As always, be sure to ask your slots-related questions. First off, I have a quick announcement. Um, <laughs> I've already been doing a little bit of this already, five or six times, um, <laughs> in the live chat before the show started, but Happy New Year. Uh, happy Happy Fourth of July. Jeez, I've been thinking a lot about the year. Um, 50 years ago, uh, six months ago. Um, happy Fourth of July. Uh, um, you know, I hope everybody has a great Independence Day. Of course, this is a U.S. holiday and we have not in U.S. Um, people. Uh, uh, but uh, for, um, you know, those of us in the U.S., Happy Fourth of July. Uh, personally, I'm staying home lately. Uh, I, I can, so I do. Uh, that's why uh, Ohio casinos even opened last week uh, for me, which is where I'm near. Uh, that I'm, I live in Ohio, uh, and I haven't gone. Uh, and I'm sure you know how tough that's been not going. But I just can't see how going would help you and other members of my audience. Sure, how does... Uh, Ohio casino crawl out of a pandemic that would make for a fine article but when would we need it again when the next when's the next pandemic in a hundred years like the last one <laughs> I certainly hope so uh, anyway here I am live streaming on the 4th of July any other year and I probably wouldn't because there'd be no way I'd want to take any of you away from what you might be doing today on a national holiday, but maybe that's not the case this year. Maybe you're enjoying your time at home and not going out. So I say if you're here on the live stream, that's great. But if you've got holiday activities planned, please go do that. I, I might go out myself if I didn't have <laughs> I didn't have next door neighbors shooting off huge firework displays starting last night, and if they do what they've always done again tonight and tomorrow night as well, three nights in a row, well into the night, uh, lovely. But my poor cats, um, it drives them a little bit crazy. Uh, I get a little bit less sleep, but they're. Uh, it messes them up a little bit. Um, uh, but, um, you know, so, okay, enough for announcements. Um, back to the show. Hi, I'm John Friedel. Welcome to Professor, to Professor Slots, a channel that's all about mastering casino slots so you can win your way to success. If you've ever walked into a casino, looked around, and wondered what's going on with slots, I can help. Thanks again for joining us today. Whether you are listening on the podcast, watching this video later, or here with us on the live stream at noon Eastern Time each Saturday, I'm glad you're all here. Today is Saturday, July 4th, 2020, and this morning the American Gaming Association's live casino tracker shows 827 U.S. casinos have reopened and 162 remain closed. That's right, another 48 casinos have opened in the last week. We're up from 79% last Saturday to nearly 84% of all U.S. casinos having reopened. For updates, visit AGA's live casino tracker using this convenient link I've created, professorslots.com slash tracker. Let's check in briefly with the live chat to say hello. 
Uh, doo -doo -doom, doo -doo -doom, there we are. Uh, wow, lots of comments. Um, we had some sort of, uh, we had a bit of pre-show conversation. Um, uh, so Chip is here. Hi, Chip. Uh, Joe is here. Uh, Chip is in Ohio. Joe is in Missouri. Um, I'm trying to remember. Um, uh, Chuck is here. No, Joe, you're, you're not in Missouri. Chuck is in Missouri. Um, California. Joe's in California, right. Um, thanks for putting that in because I'm, I'm trying to remember. Um, I, I'm getting to know so many people uh, with the consults and everything that it's, it's like, and right, you know. Um, but I'll never forget Joe or Chip or Chuck or Jan or Denise or all of the, um, you know, the regulars. Please, please forgive me if I'm, uh, Lois and Dave, um, if I'm not uh, <laughs> uh, mentioning you as, um, uh, right. So <laughs> moving past that awkward moment, uh, Chuck is in St. Louis, Missouri, and Lois and Dave are, are here. Uh, they are in Ontario, Canada. Um, they say that no Ontario c casinos are opening anytime soon. Uh, Quebec, the province of Quebec, which is a little bit further to the east um, from Ontar the province of Ontario, uh, might be opening mid-July and uh, the rest August 1st. Okay. Uh, Jan is here. Hi, Jan. Jan is in Texas. She plays in Louisiana. Um, so we have a couple of comments about today's topic, which I haven't really mentioned yet about uh, who is or is not using players' club cards. Um, and uh, we have a, a range, and I'll, I'll go over some of this. Um, don't want to jump. Let's see. And lots and lots of happy 4th of July's here. That's wonderful. Uh, Dave is here from Oregon, another regular. Um, <laughs> If that doesn't make you too suspicious, <laughs> Dave, he says he has lots of conspiracy theories. Um, and uh, uh, so a little bit of banter back and forth. And I think that's, oh, Paul is here. Awesome. Jeffrey, welcome. Jeffrey's in Maine. Paul is in Michigan. Uh, Shannon, again, uh, great questions last time, Shannon. Uh, Camillus, New York. I uh, hope hopefully um, I pronounce that correctly um yes if you would uh oh, oh brian from uh, pennsylvania brian hey uh so if you would please like this video it helps to spread the word with the youtube al youtube algorithm um i don't know if is that like a player card system where i'm trying to uh, get attention and you know bring up my play time or <laughs> um so it's it's surprising how uh, uh, general a topic that we have with um uh, you know, players, clubs, loyalty programs, that sort of thing. But please like uh, this video, and if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would be awesome. Although, if you know how to do that, then you would do that naturally if you care to. Um, so, uh, and um, hey, Mark. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so there are there are plenty of people who just listen, uh, uh, just watch, um, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you have questions, you can contact me. If you want to, you know, raise a question um, on the live chat, that's fine too. Whatever, you know, we have some private Facebook groups that are you can find them, but you can't see into them, and we'll I'll go through some of that. Uh, and there's ways to connect and find uh, like-minded uh, slots enthusiasts. Uh, that are local to you. So I, I will <laughs> wait a moment before pitching uh, the free Facebook slots communities that I have um, put together and that are growing and growing and growing and from which I'm getting questions and questions and questions and all of which drives having this live stream. In case you are new to the program, new to the show, it's basically uh, what I try to do here with this video is Q and A's. Um, and it might not be a question you have uh, today in the live chat, but I'll take that and um, I'll put it together in a future live chat, particularly uh, if Chip gives me one of the tough ones. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, well, in-depth question deserves an in-depth answer. Um, and and uh, although we can certainly do the quick response if you need it, just say so. Uh, right. So we are uh, here doing this. Um, that was excellent. My intent with these live streams is to answer your slots related questions. Questions come to me from all over the place, like 
all the places where you might be hearing me speak now. If you're listening on the podcast, call 702-90-SLOTS and leave a voicemail. If you're on the live chat, put it in the live chat. If it's a long question, and this goes to you if you're watching the video recording later, just type it in as a comment below. Today's topic is Players Club Cards. Uh, in my private Facebook group for Oklahoma slots enthusiasts, Amber asked the question recently, it was only a couple days ago, uh, to use or not to use? That is the question. Does anyone think they win less when they use their, when they use their player's card in the machine? So that was the comment that she made. And my goodness, we got a lot of responses. So that's partly why I chose this topic um, again sort of, uh, for the live stream. I've, I've covered this topic, this general topic of players' club cards twice before, and I'll get into where you can find those, um, but uh, not on this specific question. So players' club cards, a big topic, and there are um, kind of like segments, uh, sections, subsections. So we'll, we'll uh, talk about one of them we haven't talked about before. So I think the only other post besides Am uh, the only other post besides Amber's uh, that got more comments was Mary asking, "How much do you usually take to the casino?" And that was uh, I don't know if it was it, it's hard when you've got a really busy private Facebook group to see which one had the most response when there's just been you know um, it's been nearly a year uh, October well it's not nearly a year like three quarters of a year um, it and and I think this might have been the second highest uh, comment so so uh, with responses so uh, some say uh, in those responses some say that they've tried it both ways using a card and not using a card and they haven't have not noticed a difference others say uh, they don't use a card and feel like they win more without it that's basically the two ends of the spectrum in responses the in-between comments are interesting lots of good discussion going on uh, i'll mention now that if you haven't joined one or more of my private facebook groups for slots enthusiasts in your state then you're missing out, uh, even if you just want to, you know, listen, uh, uh, you know, watch. Um, you don't have to comment. Um, you know, I'll ask you what your favorite casino is. Yeah. When you press join, I have to approve it. And sometimes there's a hour-long delay or if I'm, you know, sleeping <laughs> several hours. Um, uh, and, and, you know, 24 hours a day, some of these uh, slots communities are going on, you know, two o'clock in the morning, people are winning jackpots, putting up winning, uh, you know, pictures of the winning jackpot on their screen. And then people are asking like, where are you at? How do I get there? And, you know, the people are in line waiting to be, you know, and, wanna, and, and you know, they got their phone in the pocket, they check in and people are asking, Hey, is there a line? You know, so, uh, uh, if, you know, I would say you're missing out if you aren't haven't joined one of these groups. It's it's there for you. Um, I got questions this morning about current restrictions in one state's casinos, and responses are coming in about the casino's response plan on the website and how well that's going, if at all, from slots enthusiasts who were there say last night or right now. So otherwise, you know, people are supposed to wear masks. Do they wear masks? Um, you know, are they smoking? They're not supposed to smoke. Are they, are they smoking? Well, you know, and, and the line is this versus that. It's live. Um, they're pretty darn close. You know, what happened last night sort of things as people post this morning. So, um, you know, you can wait a week and come here live. Uh, and if you want something faster, um, you know, jump in. Water's fine. Uh, yeah, and all the social, all the social distancing you could stand. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, so, you know, otherwise you might want to know if there's a long line to get in. Uh, so ask, uh, people in line are checking in on Facebook and we'll let you know, uh, to find a link to your state's local slots enthusiast group on Facebook to which you would, would need a free, uh, Facebook uh, account, uh, and you can just work with Facebook to get that, uh, use this convenient link I've created, professorslots.com slash FB, the letters FB. So professorslots.com slash FB. Join us.
Some comments um, that are coming in uh, on the question, um, not how much money do I take to a, a casino per trip, but how much um, do I use a, co a card or not? And some, some comments match my own experiences, which is that casino employees have told me uh, uh, some of these comments that I haven't mentioned, the in-between ones. They say, well, the casino employee says uh, that it doesn't matter. And I have asked that question and gotten that answer from casino employees. Uh, using, they say, using a card or not using a card doesn't matter. Uh, that's been the official response, shall I say, uh, that I've that I've gotten. Um, and other members confirm that they're always using their card even when they've gotten larger jackpots, including $5,000 and $10,000 $10, jackpots in one night with the card in. So again, it's this, you know, great feedback. Uh, as I've said, it's a lively and fascinating discussion. That's why I'm talking about players' cards today. As it happens, players' cards are an important topic for slots enthusiasts, so I've written an article and recorded a podcast, too, about it, but have not yet made a YouTube video for it. The article is Seven Advantages of Players' Clubs for Playing Slots, and the link to that article on my website, again, I haven't made a video just yet, um, the link to that article on my website is in the uh, YouTube show notes, and I'll put it in as well as in the podcast show notes as well. So the YouTube description and the podcast show notes. Um, if you're looking for the prior podcasts, um, I talk about that article in episode number 16. And also, um, I talk about things that that article doesn't talk about. Um, yeah, tried to expand on it a little bit in uh, episode 72, which um, back in episode 72, <laughs> I was uh, 25, uh, what is that, half a year ago, um, last last Saturday of 2019. Uh, I was still meandering a bit, uh, and that is uh, <laughs> hard to believe I might be, um, you know, one, once upon a time having meandered. Oh, wait, I'm meandering right now. Um, but it used to be much worse. And so I, would meand I meandered around this topic back at the end of 2019. Uh, for my last live stream of 2019. Neither of those past past episodes uh, dealt with this particular question, however, so I'm not uh, yet uh, repeating myself, even though the audience is much larger uh, and wouldn't be repeating for them. So uh, let me ask you, how do you feel about Players Club cards? Yay or nay? Yes or no? A comment below on YouTube. If you're watching this video later, call 702-90-SLOTS uh, 90 slots and leave a message uh, if you're on the podcast or anyone really. And those of you in the live chat know what to do. I'd like to hear what you think. Some people uh, can be very convinced. Uh, some people can be very convinced uh, that having that using a player club card does matter uh, to their winnings. Uh, when playing slots at a casino myself, how many times have I heard someone tell me that? Tell me that I'd win more if only I'd stop using my card. Lots of times. Uh, it's ironic, though. That's the only reason, you know, the only reason these people were talking to me was because I was waiting for the slot attendant to show up because my slot machine had locked up because I had a hand pay. I'd won. And they were telling me how to win, which is just irony. You know, people uh, <laughs> even then were asking about, uh, you know, what questioning, what what are my methods and, and, and how do you win? Uh, so uh, near the beginning of one long session, uh, quick story, near the beginning of one long session where I was playing the same slot machine while occasionally winning hand pays, while also cycling my bankroll endlessly, which, by the way, is my favorite type of winning slot machine, a nice couple uh, talked to me, uh, talked with me uh, early on while I was waiting for a slot attendant, and they shared sage advice about making sure I took my player's card out a lot. Not exactly the same thing as not using my player's card, but I wanted to talk about this um, because it's 
part of the realm of what we're talking about within the scope, I would say. So uh, it's worth mentioning this approach uh, since we're talking about cards. Anyway, a couple hours later uh, in that session, they came back and saw me waiting again for my latest hand pay. Uh, um, you know, when they'd previously swung by uh, a couple hours before that, they'd said, you know, just take your player's club out card out, you know, more and, and you'll, and you'll win. Uh, so, uh, so they saw me waiting, uh, at that same slot machine and they said, see, it works. You took your card out a lot, right? And I had to tell them that I had not. I didn't tell them they were wrong or anything like that. That would have been rude of me since they looked crushed enough by my not following their suggestion from hours before. But it's also possible that we were both right. Okay, Uh, try to follow me here. Um, It was was not that many live streams ago that we talked about this a little bit, touched on it. A casino that casinos with central servers controlling the odds of winning on slot machines, which is most casinos these days, letting the machine sit idle for a few minutes without a player's card or bankroll in it is when casinos can change the odds on the machine remotely without opening it up or without someone coming along. If it's idle in both of those ways, no card, no bankroll, no money in it, uh, That's an opportunity for the casino, if they care to, to change the odds when that casino has central servers. And they all do, except a few of the um, uh, uh, riverboat casinos because they can't run a lot of cables under the floor because it's not a floor, it's a hull. So uh, for me, uh, in the story I just told you about, I liked the odds of winning I was getting from that machine, right? I was getting hand pays, the occasional hand pay, and I was cycling my bankroll. There was no way I was going to risk the casino changing its odds of winning from where they'd set it that morning when I arrived. I was very diligent about, you know, not not making the machine idle. Uh, so Sure, I, I could have removed my card, but if my bankroll happened to get to zero at some point, I was always... Um, uh, doing things with vouchers. Um, Like for instance, in Ohio, there's a $3,000 limit. And if you win a 10,000, you know, it's, it's just some, it's possible to not spend all your money and still have your bank, your bankroll and the machine go to zero. Anyway, uh, starting trying to stay on track here. Uh, There is, uh, there was no way I was going to risk risk those odds that I had uh, when I had arrived. Um, So I could have removed the card and I could have removed the bankroll, um, but I couldn't, I, I'd have to be careful about not doing both. And it gets to be, you know, when you're at a casino sitting at a single slot machine, wearing out the chair for eight hours, for 10 hours, and you're wondering, well, I don't want to drink too much fluids, but I have to have some because I don't want to go to the restroom, but yet I want to stay. And I want to, you know, not let my blood sugars get too low. Hmm. You know, when you start getting into the eight, 10, you know, 12 hour marathon sessions, and not that that's actually a long time. Um, I haven't tried to like play through the night before. I've wished I could, but um, uh, <laughs> bodily needs, uh, you know, the the f- buffet was right there. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, there's things I've gotten better at. So, um, uh, you know, I, I, so all those things could have happened after hours of play. I, I, I could have done that, but I didn't want to risk my hand pays. I didn't want to risk my, uh, my, cy- my cycling bankrolls. Uh, and so for me, no. But for them, well, for them, maybe that's what they needed. Let's say you're walking around the casino playing the occasional slot machine. Why wouldn't you take your player's club out card out a lot on a single slot machine? Maybe given the casino, you know, maybe giving the casino the opportunity to reset its odds on that machine would improve, would improve your gambling performance, right? Maybe that would turn that slot machine into a winning machine. My concern, though, is that they'd risk losing those better odds if they kept pulling the card out. Um, Still, it's not a bad approach. It's certainly better than sitting at a slot machine. Sorry. Uh, uh, It's certainly better than sitting at a slot machine with your card firmly placed in the player's club interface while you sit there and continue to lose money. 
hmm, that sounds like a winning slots tip. It's kind of a what to do if you're not winning, so try this sort of tip. Let's switch over to the live chat and, and see what questions um, they might have. I've seen a lot of scrolling going by, but I haven't had a chance to read it. Um, oh, yes, my. I think this might be... <laughs> it's a holiday, and I've got more comments in the live t uh, chat than I've, I've yet seen. Uh, you know, and what? Let's see. We started this uh, quite a few number of episodes ago. I guess it was um, November? Yeah, three quarters of a year now. Um, so I think the last thing I did was say hello to Mark. Uh, and so we'll start up from there quickly to see if there's anything relevant uh, to this. Um, yeah, that's a, that's something I haven't. Uh, so uh, Brian mentions that uh, that you can put your card into the machine, into the uh, interface slot, and uh, you can have a connection to your account, and then it could go red, right? The the LED lights around the the interface uh, could go red. You lost your connection, uh, and that's something to watch for. Um, I would say that it's just sort of like machines. You know, there's vibrations, and you lose the connect connection to the magnetic strip. Uh, you know. It, it, that's how electronic devices work, um, and I certainly have, you know, uh, you, I don't want to be uh, too out there, but pain helps you remember. <laughs> I have a memory <laughs> of having that happen to me where my card uh, did not, uh, you know, did connect, and then it didn't connect, and I didn't notice so now I occasionally look over. Um, and the reason why it was so painful was it was one of those bankroll cycling days where I, you know, would have gone up a tier level, uh, depending on which tier level. There were times when I was doing like 40,000 points, you know, in a session, one of those marathon things. And I just kind of keep an eye on that if you lose that connection. But um, Brian was saying he had his card in the machine, uh, was hitting a bonus, uh, then it disconnected and quit hitting when I put it in again. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, that, that sounds a bit like, see, there's, there's details here, um, that I sometimes think about, um, is it just the card being out? Was there a minute when there was no money in the machine, Brian? Um, you know, were you, are you certain you did have machine money in the machine the whole time? Because my current, current working theory based on the technology, how the technology works and what I've seen and, and opinions I've gotten from others, that seems to be the two point connection of not having either of those for a minute. And then the casino can choose to change the odds. Um, and since I force, um, and this is another slot tip, uh, uh, since I force, casinos to leave the machine at the odds of winning that I like by coming in in the morning on days where I've mapped out good uh, uh, odds of winning on a particular slot machine in a morning, well, hours before it gets busy, um, and then I very carefully keep playing that machine uh, without pulling out the player's card, without pulling out the money, you can have one of those happen when you win a hand pay, but they usually leave the money in. They take their card out and put yours in. I mean, take their your card out and put theirs in when the slot attendant, you know, programs the machine to unlock it. Um, but I carefully, carefully uh, didn't give them a window to remotely change the odds of winning for hours. And then by the 4 o'clock in the afternoon, by 6 o'clock that night, I, I imagine the casino was getting a little... Desperate, <laughs> not that, it, uh, not that they know anything about me, right? Um, uh, it's not real time, and we've talked about that, but maybe we'll come back to it. So, um, yep, uh, Maggie, well, welcome and happy Fourth of July. Uh, um, let's see, Turd Ferguson, um, Fresno, California, welcome. Uh, Denise is here. She's in Texas, plays in Oklahoma. Dave says, what do you think a casino employee is going to say? Casino employee will uh, say what they've been trained to say. It's something to understand. I mean, how many times have you gotten a, 
uh, you know, a hand pay. Uh, you don't have to get hand pays, but perhaps you have. And how many times at different casinos have you gotten a hand pay? And they always say the same thing. You know, it's like a, you know, employee manual out there somewhere saying, and you say this then, and you say this then, and you say this then. Like they can't say, wow, you're spending so much money, you should go home. They could get fired for that. Uh, so, so they, you know, is not an unusual question. It might be, might seem unusual, but honestly, the practiced answer that I've gotten from casino employees about players card, they, to be that smooth, they must have said it so many times. And I forget who it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, gamblers, I knew already, <laughs> gamblers are suspicious. Okay. Uh, and there's so few things that we can do with a slot machine. One of them is having to do with the players card. Uh, right. Otherwise we got some buttons and that's about it. That's what we, that's the controls that we have. I mean, the other one that I'm trying to help people understand that's more important than all of this is when to sit down and push the button. That's vitally important. And which candidate slot machine should you choose and how do you go about doing that in ways that are important to what your goals are so you know that's right there what was that did i just sweepingly cover four live streams and and a bunch of my you know primary articles uh so yeah um uh, you know ca casino employees will say something along the lines of uh I don't have it written down word for word what did he say to me he said uh that there is no connection between the royalty club uh, uh, program, uh, the system, the, uh, you know, the, the whole uh, system that everybody plugs into, there's no connection with that to the lower part, um, I'll say lower part, lower part of the slot machine where uh, the odds uh, come in, where the um, it might have a random number generator, maybe remotely connected to the server, uh, but there's no connection between the two. And I looked at him, and now that's not word for word, but that's what he said. And I looked at him, and I said, "That doesn't make any sense." And he's like, "Why doesn't make any sense?" And 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 I I said, "When I bet five dollars at that particular casino, which was uh, Horseshoe Cincinnati before it got bought by." jacks and then i don't think this changed the signs yet but it's hard rock now um uh when uh when i make a five dollar bet in the system then i would earn one point oh have you ever seen a seven stars club this top tier at uh, caesar's entertainment uh that's that's an older one it expired in 2016 i have others lying around more recent but not um very recent not since they closed and i don't really have one to go to that's not hundreds of miles away but in any case um when i was talking to this gentleman and i said if i make a bet a five dollar bet i get one point on my players club card so that's one way the lower part of the machine is connected to the top of part of the machine, that the, the, the betting is connected to the ro loyalty club. And I'm like, there's at least that much of a connection. So it, what he said didn't make it, you know, my suspicions were raised. And then I'm naturally suspicious. And I have, um, I'll go a little further. Um, it's not that I'm suspicious. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a little spin on that. I'm going to say that I have trust issues. Okay, that's... That, I have trust issues. <laughs> so, um, you know, they had a very practiced, very, uh, you know, specific response that didn't seem to contain a lot of good information. It was just kind of wonky. Uh, so I've, ever since then, I've been thinking about this. Uh, right. So Maggie says it probably depends on how knowledgeable the casino employee is. Um, yeah, let's, so very briefly, um, how, how knowledgeable is a casino employee? All right. They can't gamble there can't gamble at the chain. They're not a member of, I mean, unless it was something from before they were hired, but they, they, they don't have the player's experience of gambling at that casino or using, you know, every casino has got a little bit different. Um, there's, a, there's only a you know, handful of different companies uh, that provide the services in, in these systems. But yet, uh, you know, the particular way that casino has incorporated them is at that casino and they don't play slots they don't gamble there or a chain 
uh, this, you know, other casinos in that chain. So what could they possibly know? It's, it's, you know, I, I imagine a, a employee manual and a handbook, and you know, being quizzed on the most appropriate answers, uh, and being warned about you not losing your job by telling people to go home despite you know you can take that mortgage, the deed to their house, you know, <laughs> or, you know some of the excesses. Um, so uh, we have a yay or nay, and we've got a yay from. Uh, Turd Ferguson, um, uh, uh, Jan Tootsie, yes. Uh, now, uh, Maggie, if you're talking to like a floor manager, you might have some better information. If you're talking to your senior executive host, you might have some better information. They might have some more knowledge. Um, but, you know, uh, watch out for opinion. Um, uh, so, oh, Denise says no card for her. Uh, and... <laughs> um, so, uh, Turd Ferguson says uh, his wife, uh, excuse me, your wife, uh, uh, takes uh, hers out all the time. Uh, so, Chip has a couple of comments here. Let's see, 13K on Friday. Um, not him, but somebody else who was using their player's card. Um, sure. I, I mean, I, I have 90 taxable jackpots in nine months. I, I, total in my lifetime is well over that but in those nine months i always used a player's club card unless it was you know uh disconnected i hadn't noticed so uh, yeah I, I right and left there's no question that you can win with a player's card but but there's some details here and and i'll get to some of the technical stuff but right now i'm just seeing how people feel uh, so computer geeks have the capability to program players cards being manipulated computer yeah sure absolutely i could buy one i could buy a slot machine over in franklin ohio i can open it up and i can get out my soldering gun and i can get out my programming strips and i have the paperwork that comes with the slot machine we've talked about this chip absolutely people can do that can you do it on a casino floor with a surveillance watching you you know could you pop it open you know <laughs> without the alarm going off yeah uh We've, we've talked about that, Chip, and I just question their ability to do that. Um, oh, what's the word I want to say here? In a uh, clandestine? I'm not, I'm not pronouncing that quite, uh, correctly. In a subtle way so they aren't detected. Right. Because it's made by humans. We can track it. Absolutely. Firm believer in that. Um, that's what I'm doing, right? Uh, only I'm not cracking over the slot machine. I'm figuring out casino pr um, practices. Absolutely. Uh, so... Um, right. So Michael says TV casino ads have in Denver shown people coming to play and hugging their machines. <laughs> Does that help? <laughs> um, people ask me what my favorite slot machine and it's, um, uh, is, and I, I've always said it's Wheel of Fortune, but it's not that I play Wheel of Fortune. There's just one Wheel of Fortune. It is now gone uh, when Horseshoe Cincinnati became Jack Cincinnati and now is Hard Rock uh, Cincinnati, it, it is gone, and I'm, I miss my friend. We had some good times together. Okay, crying and and cheering and, um, you know, the conversations that they were part of <laughs> with other people with with real people. Um, yeah, I, I might have gotten a little close with my uh, favorite <laughs> Wheel of Fortune machine. I wonder if I could have bought that. That would have been freaking awesome. I don't mean to say freaking, but man, that would have been great. Yeah, put them in my bedroom. <laughs> um, uh, right. So, um, yeah, uh, and and you did mention that chip that there was, uh, you know, there's lawsuits, jail time have caught all of that, um, you know. So for these computer geeks, but w one of the things I'm trying to, you know, do uh, is explain is you know limit myself to the information I have available as a player. You know, I've never worked for a casino. I don't even want to see some of the stuff inside the casino because nobody can blame me. No one can say, oh, you're using insider information. I'm like, insider what? I've never been inside. I'm looking at it from our perspective, okay, which is so, you, you know, I'm not trying to give you a solution that requires you to have a key, all right, uh, a physical key to whatever, you know, monkey arm or, or you know, charge this up and then, you know, electro, uh, what is it, electro... Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank on that. Uh, the electronic burst that's theoretical but possible with a nuclear explosion. <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> fry the machine. But before it does, give it a, give me a jackpot. You know, there's all these different things that you see on the Oceans movies and, you know, counting how you drop coins, not that anybody has coins. You know, I'm not trying to do any of that. I'm trying to find, tell you what works um, and, uh, you know, limit myself to what is available to you. All right. So uh, let's see. Brian says uh, there was money in the machine the whole time. Yep, yep, yep. Um, uh, Sounds fine. Mr. Bill, 6666. uh, Harris Philly is offering 5X rewards credits and 5X for tier credits through July 31st. Okay. Um, We can talk about that, that, that is the topic of the article that I've already covered. Remember, these Q&A sessions are not to cover material that you can find elsewhere, but to sort of discuss about some aspects that weren't covered. And the original article, um, uh, what was it, Seven Advantages to Players Club Cards um, uh, for Slots Players, uh, one of, and it talks about having multiple points it talks about you know what you might get if you were to use one but i don't it my impression is not that they're trying to convince you to um you know use your player's club card uh to combat suspicions and the reason why i I don't think that that's what they're trying to do um they're just trying to get people into the casino uh what they are I don't think they're trying to convince people to have a good feeling about using their player's club card because um, because it's always been around. Uh, I got into slots, you know, I'd seen them, but I hadn't, uh, and I played at a couple of casinos for maybe a year, uh, until I got to Prairie Meadows, uh, Prairie Meadows in, uh, Altoona next to Des Moines in Iowa. And it seems to me I have... I went back there not too long ago, and it is here somewhere. Oh, come on. Why am I not finding it? There it is. Prairie Gold Rewards for Prairie Meadows, Prairie Meadows Racetrack and Casino. It, um, and in <clears throat> just a little bit east of Des Moines, Iowa, uh, and when I was there, uh, in 2004, I was winning, hey, look, um, uh, when I was there in 2004, uh, I was living in Iowa, going to graduate school, and this is when I first started having my experiences um, uh, playing slots, and I found a winning machine near the bar that uh, was giving out hand pays, a dollar machine, five credit, a five times play, and uh, every hour gave out a hand pay. And that first day, you know, I went home with... You know, that first weekend, I went home with, uh, what was it, about $10,000. It's all plotted and tab- tabulated in my book, um, exactly what time and what machine and where and all the details. Uh, and there's even an article on it as well. But uh, what I, um, I didn't use a player's card. I didn't even know there really was one. I had a vague notion. Maybe you could sign up for something. I didn't really know what it was. So I never found out exactly what that week-long experience of, was it 13 hand pays uh, in that six days? And I only went like four of them, um, but several times a day, uh, uh, because I couldn't believe what was happening. Uh, And just, you know, winning $1,000 and making a little hash mark on my palm uh, or $100 or you know, I didn't even try to put down the $25 and my hand was just covered in hash marks after like four hours. And I'm like, and I was just playing, you know, $5 bets, uh, $1 credit, uh, $1 denomination, five credits, max, max bet. And I just covered my hand in winnings. And when I think about the amount of bankroll cycling that I did and number of points I would have on any player's club card, um, well, there's two reasons for that. One, I was pretty ignorant um, about how things worked uh, at the time. And it's taken a bit of trial and error and other things to get where I am now. But the uh, there was also an attitude. The other thing was there was an attitude. Okay, ooh, I'm not going to use a player's club card, you know. Remember 2004? Did, did, you know, I didn't bring my—there's uh, a grocery store called— 
uh, Kroger in this part of the country. There's in Midwest uh, High V. Um, I know there's VG, VGs is is popular. Grocery store um, loyalty cards where you scan it and you get deals when you get your groceries. You know, even back then in 2004, well, I shouldn't say even, back then in 2004, people were very suspicious of that. Just, you know, non, non-casino goers and casino goers, they had to eat too. But uh, sometimes not at the buffet. But they, um, you know, were very suspicious of that. What information do you have about me? And now it's just seen as no big deal. I think partly because we never assign our names to it, right? We never... Um, give our social security card, you know, um, get put our social security number down like we do on, on you know, these in order to be able to get a hand pay. Uh, uh, we we will, um, you know, give them personal information. But if you just get a grocery card, all that does is help them to understand, you know, if you come in one day and you buy this and you come in another day, you buy that. If you don't use a card, they're like, well, we know somebody bought something. But now this one person bought both those things on different days. So, okay. Uh, and they can, they can, it's useful to them to have that. And it pays for the discounts you get with a, with a, with a card. These, these loyalty cards, uh, Players Club cards for casinos, are much like that. Um, uh, fun fact, the uh, original loyalty club cards came from the airlines. Uh, and once one airline got a loyalty program, the other uh, airlines had to get a loyalty program. So once the first casino got a loyalty program, then it just spread like wildfire. Once the first casino, uh, well, once the first grocery store got one, then all the others had to get it. So it's just been spreading and spreading and spreading. But um, 2004, it was just a terrible privacy issue. And now it's not so much. <laughs> um, so let me check to see if, uh, what else? Um, right, so uh, if you, and that's one of the things that i has been discussed in those other episodes and other times when we've talked about player clubs is that what are you losing all right and just to sort of make that succinct a succinct succinct response was um you have a gambling goal or two or three right um common ones are entertainment you're there for the entertainment or you're there for the money or you're there for the comps and if you're there for the comps you must have a player's club card or your wife does or you know somebody's card that you're using uh, you 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 must have a card and so you can give up you know 5x tier credits 5x rewards credits um, you know that they have no concern to you uh, if you don't have uh, a comps uh, you know uh, goal uh, to earning comps um, now, you know, that's, that's your decision and understanding what you do and do not need. I mean, if you don't want to use a card and you're not interested in comps, I don't see a problem. Suit yourself. But um, there are certain facts out there, which is, uh, you know, sometimes the comps are the only profit that people who everything that they spend, you know, they win and they spend that too and they spend Spend it all, you know. They they take some of their their money and discretionary income. Spend that. Spend whatever they want. That's entertainment, all right. Uh, and that's the biggest group, entertainment group. And so, you know, if they if they don't use a player's card, they don't get the comps, and the comps are usually the only profit that they see. All right, room full of uh, um, various equipment, uh, grills kitchen appliances, whatever, blankets, pillows, all kinds of stuff, um, uh, you know, that they re-gift, re-gift at Christmas to reduce their bills. Um, I mean, how many people need a third uh, a Hamilton Beach uh, bread maker? I know I didn't. Right, so um, I think I'm kind of caught up here, or am I? I hope that my computer is not frozen. Um, seems to be something going on here. Okay. So Denise has a question. I wonder if the Border Casino by Winstar is the only casino that does not use them in Oklahoma. They never had one. Really? So so that means the story I was telling you about the airline, one airline getting them and the others had to get it. Somebody's resisting. 
somebody's resisting. But that is a bit of a, I mean, other aspects that we have not talked about, about playing club, uh, players' club cards are, you know, I, I had my, my seven stars was good at, what, 80% of casinos, right? Half, uh, 80% of the Las Vegas Strip, Caesars Entertainment. You know, if I had the MGM one, I'd have, you know, 90% covered. Or whatever the ratio works out to, there was a lot. They could give me a, you know, they could give me a comp where I would be able to go to another property, a, one, one of their other properties, use the same card, and it's all in the family, right? But on a tribal casino owned by a tribe, and it's their only casino, what's it going to cost them, all right? What is it going to cost them to, to, just have their own. Uh, we can't send you anywhere. Uh, and, you know, you're visiting and never come back. And so we don't reap the benefits that we'd like. Hmm. You know, what's the cost analysis? Why should we? In a standalone casino where it's, you know, the owners and operators have that one casino, why would they have that? It's a lot of work. It's, that's another thing I haven't talked about. Having a player's club program is a lot of work. Belterra Park uh, was independent. Well, there was uh, Belterra Resort in Indiana, but Belterra uh, Park, which was the racetrack with slot machines in Cincinnati, uh, it was just the two of those. Oh, we can send you to the resort, and the resort could send you to us, you know, the racetrack, and that was about it because it was just Belterra. But now they're owned by Boyd Gaming. And one of the big advantages in Boyd Gaming is be part of our club, and we can send you all different kinds of places. Uh, there are other properties, but if you're just a standalone, um, you know, you've got to put, you got to have a room full of people. You got to have people calling. You got to have people putting out mail flyers. You got to put out, um, you know, the statements, the emails, the, the social media, you've got to do all of that. And if you are a standalone casino, it costs a certain amount of money to do that. All right. If you are Caesars entertainment, it costs the same amount of money. You just print a million flyers instead of 10,000. So um, it's just economics of scale. We can talk about concepts. So that's Denise and good questions on players clubs. I, I appreciate asking the people asking questions about player club topic because that's what we're on. Uh, and I had a few other things to say about some stuff and we'll we'll see uh so um, if i can get to that so chip uh john by using a player's card the casino probably knows more about your gambling than you ever realized uh who cares I'm, i don't mean to be antagonistic but so uh the problem is that um, and I should read the rest of your remark. Uh, the card will give a history as to how much you lot bet and what on what days uh, uh, and what slots. Again, so what? All right. The problem that casinos have right now, and they all have for a number of years yet. I've I've looked at the slot manufacturers who make these systems for casinos, um, and I've read them carefully, and I and I I've noted wording having to do with. How quickly you sit down at a slot machine, you put your card in. If you have a host, someone asked a question about a host. Um, if you have a host and you can, they will come to you quickly. All right. But that's not the same thing, you know, as getting a phone alert that someone has put a card in. As far That's not the same thing as going, okay, now we need to adjust the slot machine's odds of winning because that individual put their card in, and we need to do it before they leave in 15 minutes. So how do we manage to process all this so quickly that it matters? Yeah, they have the information, but they can't do anything about it. Unless you're like me and you do a 12-hour session on the same slot machine and I've locked them out because I don't take the card out. Uh, yeah, uh, people know stuff about you. You'd be shocked. Um, but so, you know, um, anyway, uh, I hope that kind of makes sense. Uh, there's, as a, you know, we both... I happen to know Chip and I both enjoy physics. Uh, and, uh, you know, just because I know why the sky is blue doesn't make me enjoy it less. I might appreciate it more. Maybe. Hard to say. 
Uh, right. So, um, yeah, they know stuff about us, uh, but can they use it? Is app applicable? Um, and uh, so Dave says, if you have a host, you need to use your card to get extra comps. Um, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, the free steaks. I, I completely agree. Um, I haven't been to Michael Jordan's steakhouse, um, but the free steaks, they were 45 day age steaks. I just come off of 20 years of not eating red meat, not eating beef. Okay. And I moved to Cincinnati and this all stuff started happening. And I was just like, yeah, I'll have a steak. Uh, and then about what i think it was like 50 steaks later each one like 75 dollars or 100 dollars each all of them free i was just like okay enough with the steaks <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i'm uh, it's been a little while and i'm kind of getting like oh. it's just in the t-bone my sister had it um what is it old-fashioned or something like that no homestead uh in uh caesar's uh, form shops uh, Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. Um, <laughs> there was a bone on that thing. She took it home for her dog. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to give out family secrets, but that dog freaking loved that thing. <laughs> right or wrong, right or wrong. Don't judge me. Um, uh, so, uh, Denise, so, uh, Winstar owns, uh, Winstat, um, owns Border. I would rather have more payout, uh, than a free lap toaster, right? Uh, that, that is, again, related to all this, but something we've covered is if they're not giving you out something you want, why do you want, you know, hey, I had all kinds of free trips and no vacation time. Well, thanks anyway, you know, when I was getting those free trips. So, but, and again, third, third Hamilton Beach, you know, top end bread maker. And I'm like, well, you know, I really am trying to cut back on the bread. <laughs> uh, you can see how well that worked out. But, but um, you know, it has to be something you want. So when you consider having the, uh, you know, earning complimentary gifts gambling goal, uh, uh, you have to ask yourself, you know, do they have anything you want? Uh, oh, a win star. Yeah, I thought, Denise, you might win star, sure. Um, my goal uh, my earliest cards were not made for computer reads and machines. Some were paper. See, there's just some lovely history going on. Um, yeah, card readers, uh, you know, th that we have in slot machines, that's really ATM technology, right? It's not just being able to have a magnetic strip where magnets were hard for a while there, right? Um, uh, only became easy, what was it, 90s sometime? Um, when did ATM car machines come out? And it's not just the strip, the magnetic strip, it's also the connectivity, security, you know, not being broken into or, you know, not being uh, uh, tricked. So, um, uh Yes. Uh, th thank you, Chip. That's a, that's a fine rebuttal. Um, uh, yes. So they, they know a lot about you from your players' habits. Uh, and casinos uh, are, are seeing that uh, in a similar way to a grocery store. And it does help them. It does help them. And, and that's all to the good, right? Um, but from a player's point of view, um, it's a little esoteric to say, well, maybe I'll have more of my favorite slot machines because I play them a lot. And how do they know it being played a lot? Well, there's the money that the machine registers that's been put in and paid out, but there's also the player's club card about, yeah, yeah. Some of, some of the stuff that happens on the money end um, is maybe more useful um, than what individuals might do. Yeah, the statistics, statistics it, it, to help to understand the market in player appeal. Certainly slot um, manufacturers, which are not the casinos, um, are all over that. They just love that. And I think in order to share that information, it has to be stripped, it has to be sanitized, it has to have your personal information removed. Um, uh, there's articles out there, not articles, um, gaming regulations out there about privacy and maintaining it. But they can strip all that out and just say this machine, individual one, you know, individual, so, so, you know, did this range of behavior. And we, you know, statistically, you can show a lot of statistics, as I'm sure you'll agree. Um, uh, you know, they can make 
the casinos can make money by giving that information, selling that information to the slot machine manufacturers. Uh, but that's kind of like, you know, their side of the business and what they're doing. And I'm trying to make it from the point of view of, uh, um, although, you know, I sh could change the business over to helping slot machine manufacturers. They would certainly want to pay me $50,000 to help on what, you know, this project or that project. Um, uh, so uh, Brian says, uh, one time when I was losing, I put a card in another casino and left. <laughs> Uh, does anybody else use the little uh, stringy things to attach their their card? Um, I, I didn't move around. I never moved around much when I went in the casino. Although kind of lately, when I do the reviews, I I do a little of that. Um, and I and I'm just like, well, it's you know, it's going to be in there for like eight hours. I don't need to be attached to it. Um, uh, so did someone use a? I don't know emojis as well as I should have. Someone used an interesting emoji. Um, so let me check to see if my notes have anything else. Uh, so there's another answer, which is not as interesting, I think. I, I, mean, I think it's interesting, but it's not really getting a lot of response from people, which is, um, you know, what's the law? What's the gaming regulations? What's the, uh, and it's a little unclear, um, uh, <laughs> to say the least, um, written by lawyers uh, meant to be argued in court. Um, and so when I've looked at some of the reg regulations, uh, the only thing I want to point out is that there's three three sets of regulations okay class three games have their own set of regulations those are games of chance those are las vegas style as they sometimes call them those are uh you know written very specifically and in deep detail the gaming regulations now the the bingo style class two games the games of skill the competition based gaming machines uh often based on bingo those um have less uh thorough gaming regulations and uh, they uh, you know the class three machines can easily cover this sort of topic and you have to look for the wording on game testing and it has to be able to pass the independent laboratory testing and all that and that's why I have some confidence class three games don't don't have anything to do with this connection between players club and the betting but class two there's no rules preventing it very few rules preventing it um, and there's only one other the third group which is even less rules which is the gaming machines we're starting to see called HHR, Historic Horse Racing, and it's not even slots, okay? It looks like a slot machine, but it's based on parimutuel wagering regulations, horse racing, dog racing, other type, types of parimutuel win, place, or show um, uh, type betting. And, uh, you know, how does that even work with cards on electronic gaming machines? It's very recent technology, and I don't think the parimutuel laws have caught up with HHR gaming machines. Though, so the people in Kentucky that I've been talking to um, that, let's see if I can find it very quickly, which would be, you know, Red Mile. And uh, let's see, Derby City, you know, where they have these HHR uh, gaming machines. Uh, you know, they're seeing some very odd behavior, behavior with the player's cards, and it's not subtle. So uh, I just look to the gaming regulations and say, Class three, I don't see how they could possibly get through that. And if it's illegal, they won't do it because there's too much at risk with their gambling license. No, 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 no. Class two, eh, maybe, depending on how the written comeback is written, I'm not sure. Uh, and then HR gaming, we're, we're, we're seeing some some violations. Um, but if it's not against the law, then is it? <laughs> so, so um, again, uh, I want to uh, uh, make sure everybody, uh, please, um, uh, you know, watch my videos. I'm having a whole bunch more coming out very shortly. Um, and uh, hopefully my videos will help you improve your slots gambling performance. Uh, it would help if you watched them. Um, have fun, be safe, and make good choices. Bye. Happy 4th of July. Bye.